Hey guys, how's it going? So, what am I working on now? Well, I'm making another video on this truck. It's a GMC Sierra 04. And um, I did an ABS sensor in the front. But the customer wanted a tire rotation. So I went to go to a tire rotation and I ran into a problem. What kind of a problem can you run into doing a tire rotation? Let me show you. So here we are, some aftermarket wheels. And that lug is just in there to hold it right now. Either the lug is spinning on the stud, or the lug is stripped on the stud, which is always a possibility, and it's just spinning. So now what? Well, I'm going to have to cut the head of that nut off so I could see inside of it, and then try spinning the lug so this way I could see, is the stud spinning, or is it the lug that's spinning? Either way, I'm probably going to have to drill it out. Speaking of drilling it out, I had that other video where I drilled out the front lug that was spinning. I forgot what car it was. Honda, maybe? I don't recall. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And um, I got a lot of comments, you know, do it this way, do it that way, whatever. Okay. Yeah, there are other ways to do it other than the way I did it. Okay, if it works for you, that's great. One biggest thing that people said to me was, you should have drilled a pilot hole. Okay. I, I do agree on pilot holes. Pilot holes are a great thing. However, on that particular one, the material of the stud was actually soft en enough to where drilling it just straight up with the drill, it was cutting perfectly fine. So that's why I didn't drill a pilot hole. I forgot how long it took me, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, minutes, whatever. But it would have taken me, let's just say five or six minutes to drill the pilot hole, let's just say. And it would have taken me another five or six minutes to drill the next hole. Okay, it took me the same amount of time. If it wasn't cutting good, I would have drilled a pilot hole. Just saying, I'm just, I'm just pointing it out there. I know about pilot holes and stuff like that. So, I got a funny feeling the lug is actually spinning on the stud. I think the stud is actually secure. I just think the lug is spinning on the stud. Now, there's a couple ways you can go about this. If the stud is spinning in the axle, let's say, what you could do is, a lot of times, not all the time though, see, you don't know until you try it. A lot of times, you can take the rear differential cover off and take the stuff apart like you're gonna pull this axle out. The problem is, sometimes with the drum on it, or if you have a rotor, you can't get it in far enough to get the C-clip off to get it out. Unless, of course, you have the type with the bolt-in bearing, and then you just unbolt it and slide the whole thing out. That's a completely different story. But on this, this has got C-clips, and you'd have to drive the axle inward to get the C-clip off to get the axle out. So, but I got a funny feeling the lug is spinning on the stud. Not that the lug is seized on the stud, stud and the stud is spinning in the axle. So I'm going to try a little bit longer with my gun, just spinning it to see if I can possibly work it out. If not, I'm going to have to cut the head of this off just to see. Um, but I'm going to try that for a minute or two. I'm not going to film that whole thing, but I'm going to try that and let's see what happens. All right, so I did sit there and spin it with the tool or with the gun and it did come free. Um, I mean, it was free before, but it was stuck on there. So. Remember I showed you on those exhaust studs how that happens sometimes? You go to loosen them up, they start to go, and then all of a sudden they just spin, and they're stripped, and they're, not, and they're stuck on there, and then you got to cut them. Well, that's kind of what this was doing. Luckily, I got it to break free and actually come off. I guess it wore it out enough. And this is where power tools definitely come in handy, because I would have never, ever, ever been able to do that by hand. Never. Would have never happened. I could be sitting there for 10 years trying to do that. Um, I could have put a load, taken the other lug nut off, put a load on the wheel maybe, but then I would have probably ruined the rim in the process. So, but here, let me just show you. So it is loose now. There, that's off. If you look inside, why is this thing not focusing? There, you can see it's all stripped out inside. So let's get this actually off of there and let's take a look at that stud. I don't think it's salvageable, but you never know, it might be. Okay, and yeah, as you can see, it's all completely boogered up. And you can see from the rust in here that somebody had tried doing that before and they couldn't get it off. So that's exactly what happened. They were probably trying to, the guy was probably trying to do it in his driveway and he couldn't get it. So, yeah, so we're going to have to get a wheel stud for that. So let's get the drum off. You see those, the drum has got those bolt holes there. So you can put a bolt in there. Uh, make sure you use the right thread size bolt when you go in there. I don't know what this one is off the top of my head. I'll have to check and um, go from there. A lot of times just a quick wrap with the hammer on the outside edge here inward will make it come free. Let me show you what I'm going to do. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna try giving it a wrap with a, with a dead blow hammer. 
Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. And it did break it free. So now, as you see, there's a lot of brake dust smoke coming out of it. I might have to spray some WD on there to get it free. Hang on a second. All right, so peanut butter blaster was readily available, so I just used that. I mean, it is moving, so I'm good with that. A lot of times what happens is there's rust on the center there. And it keeps it from moving. Sorry for the lighting. I have to back off on the adjustment. Let's see. A lot of times a little bit of pressure. And you're tapping it. Let me get a little pry bar. Hang on one second. All right, since it moved out a little bit, probably get the pry bar in there. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Now you don't want to go nuts if it is if you feel like a spring tension behind it, like that. Don't go nuts prying on it because you can break the retaining springs or the hold down springs to hold the shoes down in place. So there, that's all now. Right, let me go get a rag. Hang on a second. All right, I closed the door because the uh, glare was just getting to be too much. So now, easy to get a stud out, just hit it. And find that sweet spot to get stud out. That's all. No big deal. Now the new stud here we're just going to install in place. Somebody had made a comment because on that other wheel what I did was I actually shaved down one edge end of this. Sorry, shaved down one end of this to make, make it a flat. And they were saying oh, how unsafe that was and everything else. They come through like that on half the darn wheel studs out there. So, no, it's not unsafe. You know, people just don't know what they're talking about. But anyway, so I'm going to install this. i got to get the wheel stud installer. Now, this one, I've showed you the other one for cars. This one probably takes the truck size one because it's a pretty tight fit, too, into the hub. Let me go get that tool. All right, so here's the tool. This is the... the Automotive, the one for regular cars, and it does fit, so that's the one I'm going to use. I'm also going to put a drop of gear oil on here since I have the gear oil in front of me. Just to have some kind of a lube on the threads. Oops, would help if I put it on the right way, wouldn't it? Now, this is another lug nut. We, I mean, since we deal a lot in junk cars, we have a lot of lug nuts laying around. So, this is just a spare lug nut. Try not to use the lug nuts that came from the car originally because you probably wind up ruining them. Oops, let me get the right size socket too. That would help. It. Hang on one second. All right, so that was a 22. I had a 21 in my hand. Because this thing's got aftermarket wheels, so it's got different size lug nuts. This is a factory size lug nut. heard how it all of a sudden it like slowed down dramatically that's because the um, stud actually bottomed out oops okay now we're stuck on that that does happen occasionally there we go it gets stuck on the very end there see where it's like towered so that's pretty much it so that's back together so let me get the wheel on. Unfortunately, I don't have a lug nut that's going to fit this because of the size of the lug and the fact that the, this thing has aftermarket wheels. And the aftermarket wheels use a different size outer part of the lug nut. Instead of it being a 22 millimeter, it's a 19 millimeter. 
not a single parts store around here has it to fit this stud. So the customer is going to have to get their own wheel lug somewhere. So we're going to have to put it together as is. Um, but yeah, let me get that all together and then we'll button this up. And there we go. It's all together. Like I said, missing that one lug nut so he can put one of those on because I think he has this style at home. So if he has one, he can put it on there. No big deal. He can do whatever he wants. So got lucky on that one because I honestly thought I was going to have to drill it out, but luckily we didn't have to. Um, it's very rare actually to find one that'll actually, you keep spinning it, it'll eventually come off. Uh, a lot of times they just like lock themselves on there even worse. But that, so every once in a while you got to get lucky, right? So, all right. That's it. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could please subscribe. If you look down in the uh, description, I have links to Amazon stuff. Like I said before, it's stuff that I personally use. It's stuff that I highly recommend. And what I did is I looked for budget-friendly stuff. This is stuff that does work well for the price. You know, it's, it's very budget-friendly for the home person. And I use it myself, and I'm a professional. This is what I do for a living. I've done it for, you know, 40 years now. So, all right. Well, that's it. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, Good. I think I already said this. Hit that like button. Please subscribe. You got it. All right. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.